All right, so I want to make a video today about some questions that I've been getting already between my scopes. Uh, here on my AR-15 is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20. And then on my bolt action back here, that's an SWFA fixed 20 power super sniper. So let's go over some of the features and how they differ and why I put them on the rifles that I did between the two. Uh, first up, let's talk about this Vortex. This is a sunshade from here out. It's their 50 millimeter Viper sunshade. So starting off, the tube body on this scope is a 30 millimeter. The objective lens is 50 millimeter. The turrets go in quarter MOA adjustments. And this one does have scope caps over the turrets. They're not a tactical turret. So you do have to remove them if you want to start spinning to adjust them. But uh, I actually do remove them out in the field and I do spin to adjust because of the reticle in the scope. I don't use the reticle for my long range shots. To re-zero these turrets, they're really awesome on the Vortex. They're spring loaded, you pull up, you can rotate them, and then you can re-zero it wherever you need it. So let's talk about the clicks on the scope. Let's see if you can hear them. They're tactile and they're audible. And they're they're pretty good. I like the clicks on the Vortex. Um, I have adjusted it out in the field and then I've had to re-zero it and so far it tracks reliably. I don't know how pinpoint accurate the adjustments are but they seem to get me really close for what my load data calls for. And I'm still trying to figure out if it's the load data that's slightly off or if it's my scope not adjusting perfectly. The weight, when I was putting the scopes on these rifles, I had them both off. The Vortex is heavier than that fixed 20 power. That's not a big surprise because this has an adjustable zoom on it. And uh, with the erector assembly back here and then more lenses to go through it, um, it's it's definitely heavier and it's heavier in the back end which is where the zoom feature would be at so no big surprise there vortex is heavier than the fixed 20 power this is a six and a half to 20 power scope the reason i bought a fixed 20 power is because this vortex is a 20 power and when i go out shooting long range uh, i always have it cranked up to 20. so moving on here the reticle in this Vortex is a nil dot reticle. I bought this before I really started doing my homework on shooting and long range and scopes. The only reason it's a problem that it's a nil dot is because the adjustments are in MOA. Those two don't really mix. Uh, also, it's a second focal plane scope. So as you zoom in and out, your reticle stays the same and it's not even nil dots when I'm zoomed, in, zoomed into 20. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense on Vortex's part there. The parallax is on the side right here, the Vortex. It's a smooth rotation. It feels like it's greased up in there. Um, the adjustment goes from 50 yards as the closest point out to 500 yards. And then beyond the 500 hash mark, there's an infinity sign. So this is the SWFA fixed 20 power super sniper. The tube body on the SWFA is 30 millimeters. It's a 30 millimeter main tube if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's where your rings go around. Um, the objective lens is a 42 and then I bought an aftermarket sunshade for this guy. The scope came with a small sunshade to here and then this is another sunshade you can add on to them and they are stackable. You could go more if you really wanted to but I don't see a need for it. Um, Let's see here, the turrets on this are a tactical style turret, and they're pretty sweet. Great big knobs, easy to read, and uh, let's take a closer look at these things. These clicks, they're a little bit finer than the Vortex. They might be louder though. Slightly less tactile feel. Um, but definitely more sound coming out of them. Left and right. Good and loud. You can feel it. 
but uh, the Vortex is a more crisp click. Um, let's see, what else? To re-zero these scope caps, there are three Allen keys that you may have seen. Uh, you have to remove the Allen keys, and then you can slip it along, and it's got a piece of brass on the inside that they clamp into. I've heard a lot of people have stripped these out. That's a common problem with these caps, so you got to be careful not to do that. Um, both scopes have a focus eyepiece on the rear. The difference with this SWFA on this scope is there's nothing over here. The Vortex has its parallax adjustment right here, and I was confused for a while. I didn't think that these had parallax on them. They do. Instead of having an adjustable uh, zoom on the back like where the Vortex is, your, vor your parallax adjustment is right here. And that's smooth. It feels nice and greased in there. Smooth, easy to move around. When it comes to the reticle, this one has an MOA quad. Because I use MOA, that's what I've come to learn. Um, so I wanted to have my MOA Vortex paired with an MOA scope. I chose to go with this SWFA. It has MOA adjustments with an MOA quad reticle. That's the way a scope should be built. A lot of people worry about first focal plane or second focal plane. This is a fixed power, so it's irrelevant. It's the same as having a first focal plane because the reticle inside of it is always that perfect MOA. Each hash line is going to be the same because you can't zoom in and out. Whereas my Vortex, if you zoom in, it's smaller than a mil. If you zoom out, it's bigger than a mil. You have to be right on 14 power for it to be a true mil quad scope. So I got a 20 MOA base, the Vortex rings, the scope was $300, the sunshade is $20, and uh, the rings were $20 each, so $40 for a set of rings. And you're ready to rock and roll. That's a pretty sweet setup for $340. There's a lot of scope there to be had. You just got to pick the magnification that's right for you. They do offer quite a bit of different uh, variables. They have a fixed 6 power, fixed 10 power, 12, 16, 20, and maybe a 14 in there. So go ahead and pick what you want. For me, the 20 power made sense. Let's talk mounts on the AR-15. I was looking for a way to get 20 MOA built into this scope as cheaply as possible. What ended up happening is I found a 30 millimeter one piece mount that has 20 MOA built into it. For me, on a budget, this is what I chose to do. This is from Midway USA and is their AR Stoner brand. Let's talk eye relief on these scopes. The SWFA pictured here seems to be a little more picky of having an exact eye relief. The Vortex is not as picky of having that perfect eye relief. The SWFA, as you shift left to right, it goes out of focus very quickly. The Vortex is slightly more forgiving, but uh, I lined up the back of the scope with where I had my Vortex lined up on that rifle. And uh, the eye relief seems to be really similar with how far back your eye is from the scope. I'm sure those specs are posted online at their website, so if you really want to know what their eye relief is, be sure to tune in. As I see it, these are two budget-minded rifle scope choices. So uh, you're going to have to decide what's most important to you and what you want. Something I might have wanted on SWFA it's just higher uh, optical quality. I mean, I'm talking like real expensive scopes with just the most clear glass possible. I think anybody would want that. Outside of that, I love the feature set on that thing and the way it's set up. I like the reticle because it's not cluttered. I don't like those Horus reticles that have craziness going on all over inside them. I'm not a PRS shooter, so it's not exactly for me. This reticle is exactly what I want. In this scope, I wish it was first focal plane. And I wish that it had a mil quad, not a mil quad reticle. I wish that it had an MOA quad reticle, just like in the SWFA. SWFA doesn't have crosshairs that go through your target. It has crosshairs that almost touch, and then there's a dot in the center where you want to place your shot. I really like that. It gives you a really fine point of aim. Whereas these ones, uh, the crosshairs do run over your target. However, they're not too thick. 
And because it's second focal plane, as you zoom in and out, they never get thicker or thinner. They stay just right. I really like the thickness on the lines. I have looked through a Nikon M223 scope, and the lines on that were a little too thick for my liking. But uh, that's why they make so many different scopes, is so you can pick the one that's right for you. Uh, this is the more affordable option. This one's a little bit more money, but you do get that adjustability. So I just took some time and did a comparison between these two. Uh, the distance was probably between 80 to 150 yards. I was looking at some things that have some fine detail on them. At 80 yards, there was a small sticker that had lettering on it. Between these two scopes, I could read it with both. However, SWFA is a clearer picture. This is at 80 yards or so. If I were to guess, um, the sticker is maybe two and a half inches wide, an inch tall. But uh, the SWFA was definitely a clearer picture. It was easier to read. Um, the Vortex, it was you were able to read it if you had a pretty good idea of what it would say. It was quite blurry, but uh, it, was, it was still blurry with the SWFA. It was more clear with this than it was with this. However, the... Uh, your parallax adjustment with this vortex has bigger gaps between each number. It's more finely adjustable. You can adjust it to a finer point than you can with this SWFA. Notice all the numbers are real close, bunched up together. And uh, this is, you can come a lot closer, 10 yards versus 50 yards with this thing. So you should be able to adjust close for uh, close range targets, but you're still going to be at 20 power zoom. This is a slightly clearer optic than the Vortex. The Vortex has adjustability. The SWFA is slightly lighter for the fixed 20 power versus this thing cranked up to 20. Um, that's how it breaks down. So these are your options. This is a pretty comprehensive review of both these scopes. Hope it helped you. Let me know if you want to know any more technical specs. I'll try and help you. Um, I'm not sure if my Google search will pull up any more than your Google search would. The turrets on my Vortex have proven to be quite reliable. And uh, when I was zeroing in this rifle initially, the tracking was 100% on this Tika. Both these scopes are great budget options. I don't think you can go wrong. If you're looking at a PST, I'm sure it's going to be real similar to this Viper I have. You're going to go up to 24 power though. And uh, if you're looking at an SWFA, honestly, the glass is clear enough for me. I don't know how much of a glass snob you are or uh, just what you expect out of it. I mean, for 300 bucks, it's a great scope. You're getting it for the tracking abilities and uh, its ruggedness. The Vortex is a great way to go. I'd probably say go with the Vortex if you're a hunter. That way you can back out if you have a close range shot. But for known long range distances, Honestly, I like them both. I'm not getting rid of the Vortex for an SWFA, and uh, I plan on keeping my SWFA as well. Well, that's about it for this review. Um, if you have any more questions, go ahead and drop a comment. Like the video if it helped you. Uh, honestly, pull the trigger on either one of the scopes. They're both great. I really like what both of them have to offer, and uh, they're working for me so far. I'm really excited to go try this SWFA more. Maybe in the future I'll do a box test and uh, really run the turrets and whatnot, but for now, I don't really care to burn the ammo just to find out how finely it tracks. We'll find out as I take it out to distance. But uh, if you like reloading, I do quite a bit of the videos on my results from reloading. I reload 223. If you want to learn how to do that, you can check out my re reloading 223 process. Uh, I'm trying to get my 243 figured out for some good precision ammo. If you want to see how I'm trying to accomplish some precision ammo for that, be sure to check out my quest for precision videos. Um, check out my channel. Go ahead, cruise around, and uh, leave me a comment, like the video if it helped you. Thanks for watching.